الذي خلق السماوات والأرضين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد فقد قال الله تعالى بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم كنت خير أمة أخرجت للناس تأمرون بالمعروف وتنهون عن المنكر وتؤمنون بالله صدق الله العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين It has now been over a year since Israel has started its brutal military assault on Gaza. And now the assault has also started in Lebanon. And the suffering that has unfolded since is almost too overwhelming to imagine and to witness with our own eyes. And it's very difficult to comprehend unless we are on the ground. Now the lives lost vulnerable lives, especially children, is something we are feeling, we are all feeling sorry about. But how can we remain silent in the face of such volume, oppression and injustice? Over 42,000 people have been killed. <coughs> According to the latest estimate in what the International Court of Justice has called a genocide. But is it really 42,000? Is it really 42,000? This is a number we keep being fed as one year passes since October. It is a huge amount of people a large number of death. Let us go back in very recent history. Many of us here are old enough to remember the Iraq invasion in 2003. That was based on false information. <coughs> now, according to a medical journal, some of you may have heard of it, called the Lancet, between 18 March 2003 and June 2006, listen carefully, there were over 600,000 Iraqi civilian death, which were caused due to the violence of the invasion. Now, again, listen to these figures carefully, over 600,000 death in a period of just over three years. One survey conducted by the ORB International, which is an independent polling agency located in London, they even give a higher figures of over a million civilian death in Iraq in a short period of four years. Why am I mentioning this? The reason I am mentioning this is because of Gaza. Gaza is one of the most densely, most densely populated area of land on earth. <coughs> the violent <coughs> bombings of schools, the violent bombings of hospitals, the violent bombings of even the refugee camps, 
Each one of us think to ourselves, how can the death toll only be 42,000? What about all the bodies burned to ashes? What about all the bodies trapped in the rubble? What about all the children left with no parents? What about all the parents left with no children? What about the number of people injured? Those left with missing limbs? Severe burns? Injuries that cannot be treated due to a lack of medical care? Our global leaders can look back at Iraq and order a public inquiry to learn lessons from the Iraq conflict. But looking at the situation of Gaza, West Bank and Lebanon, and the support which is shown to Israel through providing arms, finance, the deployment of military, and lots of special speeches of support, is there any lesson we can learn from them? The lesson we learned is the genocide did not start last year in October. But oppression, the zulm of the Palestinian people over the Palestinian people has been ongoing for over 76 years. So my dear brothers and sisters, this is not a recent tragedy. It's a history of displacement, of fear, and a tragedy that generations have faced. Not one, but many generations have faced. The destruction of Gaza is not just a war of bombs and bullets. It is a war on humanity. And we as Muslims, we have a responsibility to speak up, a responsibility to act and to fight against such ghul and injustice. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam warned us of this and he said, the people will soon, the people will soon call and invite one another to attack you. The same way as people are inviting each other for a meal or to share a dish, they will soon call each other to attack you. So one of the Sahaba, radiallahu anhu ajma'in, he asked, why is that? Is that going to be because we will be in minority or a small number? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam replied, no, you will be numerous at the time, you will be a bigger number. But unfortunately, you will be like the froth on the sea, meaning so much froth on the sea. But Allah Azza wa Jal will remove the fear of you. Allah Azza wa Jal will remove the fear of you from the hearts of your enemies. And he will throw wahal in your heart. Somebody asked. O Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what is wahl? And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam replied, he said two things. He described wahl as two things. Number one, he said, love of this world. And number two, he said, wahl is the dislike of death. And this hadith is found in Abu Dawud. So my dear brothers and sisters, this is where we stand today, unfortunately. The Ummah is vast, vast, over two billion Muslims, one quarter of the global population, 25%. But we have become weak. Why? Because we are distracted with this world. But to the al Hayat al Dunya, we see in the way our leaders. And the media have responded to the suffering in Palestine and Lebanon. When bombs fall on empty lands, the world leaders rush to offer solidarity to the oppressors. But when those bombs 
lying on the heads of children. They remain silent. Or oh, they will offer some hollow words of peace that will never challenge the true, the haq, and the true culprit of these crimes. Allah Azza wa Jal said, كُنْتُمْ خَيْرَ أُمَّةٍ أُخْرِجَتْ لِلنَّاسِ تَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَتَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ وَتُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ You are the best of nations. But why? Why are we the best? <coughs> because you enjoy what is right and you forbid what is wrong. And you believe in Allah. This is not a passive role. It is a call to action. Allah Azza wa Jal has selected us and chosen us to stand up for justice. <coughs> and to stand up against dhul. And to protect the innocent. But how many of us are doing this today? How many of us are truly living up to this duty and responsibility? How many of us have stayed awake at night, unable to sleep because of the pain we feel for our brothers and sisters in Gaza, in Lebanon, in Bangladesh, in Sudan, etc. How many? The Prophet ﷺ said, the example of the mu'min, of the believers in their affection, in their mercy, in compassion for one another, is compared to one body. One body. When any limb aches, when any part of the body is in pain, the entire body is in pain. The whole body will react with sleeplessness and fever. This hadith is found in Bukhari and Muslim. We are one body. And when one part of us suffers, we all suffer. Yet how many of us are truly feeling the pain? How many of us are moved to action? To speak out? To donate? To pray? To make dua for our brothers and sisters? This is not just a humanitarian issue. It is a matter of faith, of Iman. We will be questioned by Allah about how we responded to the whole injustice in this world. Did we stand up for the oppressed? Did we remain silent? Did we raise our voices? Or did we let our fear silence us? Justice is not an option for us. It is a fault, an obligation. We must stand up for the oppressed, regardless of who they are. And we must do so with courage and yaqeen, conviction. This is what Allah Azza wa Jal mentioned. Hold firmly to the rock of Allah all together and do not become divided. Dear brothers and sisters, our strength as an Ummah lies in Ittihad, in unity, in our unity, in our commitment to justice, and in our strong faith in Allah Azza wa <coughs> Yet, the sad reality today is we are a divided Ummah. We unfortunately have allowed ourselves to be separated by borders or categorized by countries or races or nationalities and worldly distractions. This division, this division has made us weaker and weaker and weaker. And it has allowed the violent, the oppressors to continue their work, their tyranny and oppression. But we must not lose hope. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he reminded us the strength of the ummah 
is not in numbers. The strength of this Ummah is in faith. The strength of this Ummah is in our connection to Allah. The strength of this Ummah is in our commitment to justice. We are not helpless. We have the ability to make a difference. We can pray for the oppressed. We can donate, as I mentioned, to their cause. We can raise our voice against the bull that continues to spoil our world. Allah Azza wa Jal mentioned, وَمَا كَانَ رَبُّكَ لِيُمْلِكَ الْقُرَى بِظُلْمٍ Allah would never destroy a people oppressively so long as they remain within them some who are seeking self-rectification, some who are always trying to reform themselves. Now, it is not good enough to be good individually, on a personal level. We must actively work together as one team, as one body and one ummah to rectify the world around us. To encourage good and to forbid evil. This is our duty as Muslims. And this is the key to our survival as an Ummah. As we have sadly marked the anniversary of Israel's assault on Gaza and now the assault on Lebanon has started. Let us renew our commitment to justice, to unity and to faith. <coughs> Let us not be like the froth on the sea, <coughs> numerous but weak. Let us be the Ummah that Allah Azza wa Jal has described in the Quran, an Ummah that stands for justice, an Ummah that will protect the oppressed, an Ummah that will hold firm to the rope of Allah. May Allah Azza wa Jal give us all the strength the courage and the wisdom to fulfill this duty and responsibility. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين من كل ذنب فاستغفروا إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. الحمد لله نستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا بين يدي الساعة من يطع الله ورسوله فقد رشد ومن يعصيهما فإنه لا يضر إلا نفسه ولا يضر الله شيئا أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد عبدك ورسولك وصل على المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات وبارك على محمد وأزواجه وذريته قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أرحم أمتي بأمتي أبو بكر رضي الله عنه وأشدهم في أمر الله عمر رضي الله عنه وأصدقهم حياة عثمان رضي الله عنه وأقضاهم علي رضي الله عنه وفاطمة سيدة نساء أهل الجنة رضي الله عنها والحسن والحسين سيدا شباب أهل الجنة وحمزة أسد الله وأسد رسوله رضوان الله عنهم أجمعين اللهم اغفر للعباس وولده مغفرة ظاهرة وباطنة لا تغادر ذنبا اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم انصر دينك وكتابك وسنة نبيك 
وعبادك المؤمنين اللهم فرج هم المهمومين من المسلمين ونفس كرب المكروبين وقض الدين عن المدينين واشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم احفظ الحرمين الشريفين اللهم احفظ المسجد الأقصى المبارك اللهم احفظ المسلمين والمسلمات في كل مكان يا رب العالمين يا حي يا قيوم يا رب العالمين يا ذا الجلال والإكرام اللهم أنت الله لا إله إلا أنت أنت الغني ونحن الفقراء ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار سبحان ربنا رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين